When I was abroad, there was a bloke who lived in the hospital in a cave, and he, he, uh, how does I do that? he blew into it and then pressed it. They're nice things. So you don't, it's, it's what you call it an idea, you don't dip it, only dip the things out. And then it, you can work in between. These are from B&Q, but you can find it B&Q and... Um... Yes, lovely, yeah. Yeah, this is my second lot of beans I've put in because uh, <coughs> when I put uh, the beans in earlier this year, I was coming around and kept looking and looking and looking and I'm saying, I can't see any beans, Sandra. Then we suddenly saw some small little holes in the ground. And those little holes were made by mice. And now I've been eating the beans I've put in. I did check them all out. I think we saved about a dozen, that's all. So I had to sow some more seed in three inch pots, which I would do normally, and uh, re sow. Uh, this is what's happened. And being a bit later in the season of putting them in, I've not so many beans on the bottom. It's more on the chops. And I don't really like that, but um, because they get all muddled together. <laughs> there is a nice show on the balloons anyway. And if anybody's interested, they're called Enorma. Enorma balloons. And a little bit late as well. I could, so much to do in the garden with the season being as it is. Uh, what with the rain, the wind, the late frosts, it's put everything upside down. And um, <clears throat> normally I'd have my beetroot sowing just after March, but um, I just couldn't get round to them, so they're a late sower. And uh, but they're doing all right; they're coming on. And I was sowing them in uh, three-inch pots as a group. I put four or five seeds in a in a pot, so they're bunched together when they come up. And uh, I don't split them up at all; I just put them straight in the soil as they are. Planted. and they will grow and have been growing to about a golf pool size which is just nice mm. we've got a mate <laughs> she took out all her, um, what do you call them, lupins. She had, she had lupins there, didn't she, last year, and the beginning of this year. But they get so big, they were getting over six foot, taking up a lot of room. Um, so we decided to have them out, or she did, so we've dug them all out, the lupins, that were at the back there, and um, put in these roses. They're a bush rose, don't go very high. But after two or three years, they should look lovely in there. This I didn't look after. Look for that next year then. Hmm? Or look for that next year. Yeah, yeah, that one. Because that's where the summer house used to be. Just here, wasn't it? Yeah. And we had that moved, laid a bit of grass, and built the garden there. Underneath the apple tree. Uh, that goes very well, the apple tree.
Picture taken for you too? Yep, yes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. This lovely garden. Garden, yeah. Get the names of the grapes, but the one on the left is a foreign grape and it's not doing too well. Although it has got one little bunch on here at the moment and we had one little bunch last year and that was all. The grapes on the right hand side are from our neighbour's uh, father's greenhouse down at the brick ponds down the uh, Hall Lane. Um, he gave us a cutting which I planted just outside the greenhouse, made a hole through the bottom and it's come up and you can see exactly how it's grown now. And it's got quite numerous amounts of little bunches on it and it's only been in here three years the most. That one's been in here nearly five years on the left and it's not going oddly anywhere. 
The one on the left, I did cut back a couple of times, and I've done the right thing by the, knowing by the buds. Uh, and I've just noticed there's a great poking out of a leaf over there which shouldn't be there. <laughs> Believe it or not. Anyway, um, yes, there's quite a few grapes on there. Four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven or eight she's got in there, yeah. Yeah, Sandra and myself, we water them every evening. Uh, she likes a little uh, thumb type tomatoes. Which is a bit, a bit larger, but they're doing well. The only trouble with Sandra, she never picks the tops off, and they just keep growing and growing forever. <laughs> but bless her, she's got quite a few. Uh, she's very pleased with them. I guess they're taller yeah. than she is. Yeah, and uh, and the tomatoes are hanging down there just like the grapes. <laughs> yeah, lovely, nice little greenhouses in there at the moment. And I'm glad the door's open. Yeah. Sandra's, are they? Yeah, they're Sandra's. Sandra looks after the dahlias and most of the flowers in the garden and the shrubs. I do, I do lock pruning, digging, cutting grass, cutting hedges. But Sandra looks after her dahlias. Dahlias, yeah. We thought we was going to lose it, it was going to snap off, but I've had to put it up twice. This is lovely. This grass, look at it, it's just coming out lovely now. It used to be over there. It used to be over here by the pond. Yeah. Doing nothing. We've moved it and put it over here because it's on a different bit of ground probably. And um, it gets the rain and the odd bucket of water we put on it. And look at it. It's lovely, it's beautiful. It's yes. like a big mushroom. Oh. My favourite flower. Which um, one? Blue one. Agapantha, isn't it? Agapantha, yeah. My favourite flower. And she adores that dahlia. That one there. It's beautiful. The other one? Yeah, that yellow one. She really loves that one. Yeah. 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 She does what she wants to do with dahlia. I mean, a lot of people, they dig these up in the winter, they turn them upside down, dry them, take all the moisture out of them, store them, and then when they go to spring to put them back in, they've only got half of them left, they've gone rotten. Sandra leaves those in the ground, we cover them up with earth and compost, and then we just have a look at them in the spring and see the little shoots coming up, and that's it. Lovely. I had some Polly's got a lot of berries on it this year. You can't quite see them from here, but... Uh, Polly? Berries on there. It's really crowded with berries, but it takes a while for your eyes to see them, get acclimatised to them. But last year there was hardly any berries on it at all. That's going to be pretty. It's just been left alone, and that's it. The sparrows love it to hide in. Mm. Hundreds of them. Yeah, hundreds of them. I know it's a lace cap. So I know sometimes I know, sometimes I don't. Um, a light will be easy work. Yeah. Only about eight for that. Yeah. Are you finding me out, Margaret? Are you finding me out? I'll ask Sandra because she would know. Oh, I could do. So how would you 
do that then. I can. Okay. Beautiful. Roses I can. Can you? I can uh, I like to go on like yeah, so crafting. Oh, did you? Mm -hmm. Can I see those bags? I have. It's an emu! Well, I tell you what, if you've got a joey in there, you keep it in there. I don't want it. <laughs> oh, it's an emu. Do you want a joey then? Do you want a joey? No. It's a bird. It only used to be in New Zealand. They have, they've tried to actually uh, get, get one or two, and they've one or two smaller emus that they call it, and that's like a kiwi. And the kiwis ruled in New Zealand forever until the Americans, or the British, introduced rats. There was no predator kiwi, because they were a flightless bird. What, rats in New Zealand? Yeah. yeah we introduced them. We, we and the Americans introduced them. Yeah. And they cleared them out. Because kiwis 